Good afternoon. That sounds better. <laughs> Thank you, I choked before the talk. Um, welcome to my broadcast, and today we're going to talk about support and how hard or how easy it is to receive it. And maybe this reflects on your life. I'm going to share some of my own, my own experience because I had a flashback memory of this recently, so I thought I want to share it with you, and also why you may want to risk a bit more. So before I jump into that and give you the whole spiel, or the, or the download, so to speak, let me give you my opening spiel, which is my introduction of who I am, what I'm about, why I do these talks, you know, why you might, might want to watch. Um, hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker, best-selling author, um, actually, inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for men and women, couples and singles. I highly recommend it. I'll put a link in the comments because you'll love it yourself. I am biased. And I'm also um, a relationship and love expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which informs my work with women, and also what started these talks almost three years ago now, called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And it was actually a Facebook memory that popped up from seven years ago, seven years ago that was basically giving me this thought today to talk about support. Because I'm also aware that I've had Quite a few people tell me they want to reach out for support around coaching or around guidance or around just heartfelt holding space for them when they're going through stuff, stuff being relationship challenges or challenges of getting a relationship. And I'm starting to realize what's going on. I should say a, I have a feeling of what's going on. I don't know the truth of this, but my suspicion is coming up, which is basically that, well, let me do it this way. Let me tell you what happened for me seven years ago and then I'll explain what I think is going on for some of the women in particular who I know who have been on the fence about asking for support or risking getting support more, more accurately. So seven years ago um, around this time is when my mother passed away back in England and I was in a place where I wasn't in the financial place to be able to get back there quickly because it, it was an immediate need to fly which meant the tickets were higher and so I was really like oh crap sort of thing what do I do and what I got from a friend, thankfully a friend stepped in just at the right moment, was to reach out and ask for support, to ask for help, ask for financial support, mile, you know, mile support, something like that would get me over this and get back from my mother's memorial. Because I'd actually flown back previously in July, July that year when she was sick. So going back for the funeral was a second trip in one year. I wasn't budgeting for it, didn't plan for it, didn't have the money for it. But inside of basically a week and a half, two weeks, we started it, it, I'm trying to remember now when I flew out. I flew out, I think, basically around three or four days from now, seven years ago. Um, people came through. An incredible amount of support came out, both financially and miles. So I actually got upgrades on the flight going out, which is pretty sweet. Um, not coming back, but going out, yeah. So I basically had an incredible trip that was a beautiful blessing because I asked for support. That's one reason I give back so much because I felt so much of a... Um, fulfillment of being given so much that I had to give back as a way of thank being thankful for that. And this is the thing about giving and receiving. It's an interesting dichotomy we find ourselves in, where we give a lot but we may not receive a lot. And I'm st still humbled by that experience. Sorry, I just stopped for a moment just to remember that moment. It was quite a, um, it was very humbling, I'll say that. Anyway, so again, back to the present moment about you. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. I tend to get back to being present with you. <laughs> <sighs> Memories, yes. So, what I'm very aware of for a lot of my clients and women who I love dearly and women who I know would love to work with me is that they, because it may not be you, but they, and you might include yourself in that if you choose to, they, <laughs> that means too pedantic, have become fiercely independent. These women are women who have basically had to make their own way, either as entrepreneurs or in business where they protect themselves and be able to get things done. And the truth is that when it comes to getting support, they don't choose to trust it because they've been burnt too many times in the past. And that paradigm, that challenge, has made it hard for them to find a way to get support they want or need to get where they want to go, whether that's in relationships or in business or in health or any area. And in fact, a lot of times, some of these women, I'm going to put them in a bucket of these women, so to speak, have been caught up in this paradigm where they're driven to get things done. And it's almost as if if they get support, somehow they feel like they've been hobbled. They've been held back. They've been 
sidelined by the support need. And I was actually watching um, Stephen Colbert um, on, U- on YouTube, the replay from last night. We had, had Julie Andrews on. And she talked about how she went to, see, went, to, went to seek therapy because one of, I think she so said Mike Nichols, I think it was. No. One of the guys she knew back at that time suggested he go see therapy because he was getting so much value out of it. And she saw in him how healthy, how happy, how fulfilled he was in his life and doing great things and how he attributed that to the therapy he went to get. So she went into therapy herself just because there's you know, so much stuff going on in her head, so much stuff getting in the way, so much um, clutter, I think the word she would use was, was getting in the way of her being free to enjoy her life. And so she went to see a therapist and worked through some of those things and she was very grateful for that. She said in the broadcast that she pretty much suspected it saved her life. Now I'm not saying it needs to be that dire straight to seek support. What I am saying though is if you're not going to places where you can get support, whether it is going to seminars or trainings or retreats or counsel with somebody who's a therapist or someone like myself who's a coach, somebody who can actually support you and hold the space for you to actually become more whole yourself and to be in the place where you can get what you want in life the way you want to do it. I was actually watching a Facebook Live earlier in a group I'm part of, it was almost about these, these seminar junkies, and I was one for a while. And that to me speaks to the idea about, and I'm bringing all these things together, so bear with me. The support oftentimes isn't something that is the, I'm saying, there's another saying it. The support doesn't always come through one flavor put it that way because there's such a thing as overdoing it or overdosing on certain teachings that don't actually help you change sometimes you realize that you're doing, you've been doing these trainings and teachings for a while now and there's still something that isn't shifting and it ain't the training is going to help you it requires you going somewhere else for a different perspective that might let you see it in a different way so you can actually come at it at a different angle and transform that experience into something you want that's one of the reasons why I love doing what I do in my coaching because I've been through so many seminars and been a seminar junkie yes and trainings and teachings and master's programs and everything else. So my toolkit is very diverse, I'll put it that way. And so I'm encouraging you not necessarily, I mean, yes, I want to promote myself, but I'm encouraging you if you want to get some support, some guidance, seek someone, first of all, that you feel safe with. Maybe you didn't see that one coming. But this is the thing. There are many experts out there who know so many things, who are skilled in 20, 30 years of background, but you may not feel safe with them. You may not know if you can trust them or not. And that's the thing that I'm very aware of in my own experience where I've been offered guidance by people because I'm also a student and teach and learning from people too all the time where I can resonate and sense where those people are coming from and go, you know what? They're not in it for me. They're in it for themselves. Or they're not in it to, they're not going to give me the tools and skills I need to go where I want to go. Where they're going just doesn't fit that. And having an understanding of what it is you want to face, what you're facing, what you're dealing with, because some people out there, and I know I'm one of them, to be transparent, have done so much work, it's hard to find somebody who knows more than we do. <laughs> no, it's not an ego thing, it's just a fact of life. So the challenge is that we can sometimes second guess ourselves because we know too much, or we know enough that gets us in trouble. Maybe it's just me, I don't know, I think it's some other people too. So what I'm aware of is that I've, I've found myself seeking guidance from people who come from very different directions I mentioned earlier because that's the thing that shifts for me is if I find somebody's done the same work I have to learn from it generally doesn't always work because I know as much as or more than they do so I can self facilitate or self entangle myself so to speak so the recognition of that in support is that I'm looking for someone else who has a different perspective that will shift my perspective to where I want to be and sometimes it is having a paradigm shift that is the big key to what shifts you into where you want to go. And the challenge with that is, is if you don't know what that is, it'd be hard to trust it. And so as I mentioned at the beginning, it's like, do you, do, you, um, do you trust being supported? Now, ladies, in particular for this watching this broadcast, in relationship, one of the biggest challenges I understand is when you've been so busy driven to get your own thing, to make, th- to make your way in the world and to have it happen the way you want it to and take charge and get things done, it can be very hard to find a man you can trust in a relationship because every man you've worked with may feel like you couldn't trust any of them. So when you're dating, how do you find a man you can trust? So working with a man like myself as a coach can also feel challenging because then how do you trust me? So my, com- my, my context of this is, is understanding that relationships require a massive leap of faith for a lot of people, for men and women, in fact. 
but for the, for the ladies watching this, if you're single and you've been through this journey, hi Danielle, nice to see you my broadcast. If you've been through this journey of self-empowerment, self-support, and self, um, what's the word looking for? Motivation may be the best word. It can be hard, find, hard to find somebody else who you can trust who will do that with you or for you. So finding somebody you can do that dance with in a relationship is one thing. Finding somebody who can help you as a guide, a coach, a facilitator, a teacher, whatever that is, can also be very challenging. But the thing I want to say to you is, you won't know until you let the walls down and start trusting. Now, I want to qualify something here because it can be tempting to say, well, why don't you go trust somebody and you're just, just like jumping off the cliff with no guidance, no risk, no ability to find somebody. This is the thing. You can build trust in getting support when you do it the right way. What's the right way, I hear you asking? Maybe, maybe you aren't. Hi, Amanda. It's really going to be when you come to the place where you can either test drive the person you want to work with or you can actually get some help. Thank you, Daniel. appreciate the feedback. Or you can, or you can verify this person has, can stand on their own two feet. And yes, in some cases, and this is, this is going to be self-transparent here, in the area of a relationship, I know that sometimes it's more... It, it, it seems more obvious to go seek somebody's already in a relationship to guide you as a coach. And I've said many times, I'm not in a relationship. I am, I've been single for tw uh, 12 years now. 13, 12, 12 and a half. <laughs> and the thing is, people look at me and go, well, how can you coach this stuff? It's like, because I've been in enough relationships where I learned the lessons I need to learn. And I also took the time to learn from the teachers that showed me where I was missing and gave me skills that I now teach and express and work with in my life that can help you have what you want in your life as well. So when I talked about relationships, and I have actually a feedback from a friend of mine who did, who did my human design chart, and I talked about this a while ago, um, that in the human design model, there we have different definitions, single, split, um, triple, and quadruple are the four different forms. And a single definition person is somebody who basically doesn't need a relationship to be whole. Or, excuse me, wrong framing, because whole is something about codependency. They don't need a relationship to be able to do what they do in the world, put it that way. That's me. I'm one of those. Which means I don't need a partner to do the work I'm doing, although it's additive to what I can give. So what I'm, I, I don't want to, I'm not intending to like hang out my shingle and say, this is my work, you should come work with me, although you may get some subtle hints from what I'm saying. But I do encourage you to seek out somebody you can trust. And there are people out there who are couples who I wouldn't trust for coaching a relationship because I look at their functional relationship. My parents, who I love dearly, and again, my mother passed away in 2012, have so much stuff that I would never trust them to guide me in relationships. Even though they've been together, they were together 59 years till my mother passed away. They had a very long lived relationship and it wasn't dysfunctional necessarily, but it was also very flat line for me, for what I would want in a relationship, just to be transparent. So I've learned because of what I didn't get, <laughs> I've learned from what I've done myself and the mistakes I've made, and I've made plenty, to deal with things differently. So yes, is sometimes they say we should go see you go see an expert who's done what you want to do the business coach health coach etc etc sometimes yes and sometimes they may have expertise that the other people don't have so you might want to check out what they bring you and what they deliver and in my area of work with relationships i'm absolutely passionate about you having what you want it's my service my gift to the world and yes my future or should say my declaration you know the relationship i'm attracting into my life adds to what I'm already doing and she and I will be doing this together that's my intention that's my vision and that's what I'm bringing into my own life so that's my own <laughs> display of what I'm doing in my world so um, what's that matter you believe our parents sometimes expose us to exactly what we don't want like you mentioned exactly well that's the thing um, just a sidebar that to finish that piece because I talked about this two days ago I think it was that our parents are the role models we learn from whether we want to or not so as a five-year-old, six-year-old, or even three-year-old, we watch our parents to see how they model a relationship, and without even thinking about it, because we're not consciously thinking of this, we go, that's the way a relationship should be. And then we live that out as an adult until we learn how to fix that. So just a sidebar to finish that point, in fact, if you are somebody who, um, well, if you're an adult, <laughs> and you look about your parents' relationships, you notice there's a similarity between how your parents interacted, or the interacted with you, and the way your adult relationships are working, that's the tie-in. And that's the reason why you're doing it. It's because we are imprinted by our parents, not intentionally, and they're not doing it overtly, but they model for us because they're the adults we grew up with. And as young infants, same as animals in the wild, the young learn from their parents how to do things, how to eat, how to forage, how to, how to hunt prey, how to groom themselves even. 
So yes, and exactly true, Amanda. Yes, it took you. It, it took you a while. Yes, you realize they're doing the best they can with the tools they have, although the tools may be undeveloped or toxic. That's a very well said statement. Thank you, Amanda. That is beautifully put. Because that's the thing is, it's not about judging your parents as being wrong or being bad. It's being aware that your parents did the best they could do with what they knew how to. I know for some of you watching this, and for myself personally, as I said, I have been a seminar junkie for years. I'm not, I don't as many. I don't very few now because I really learned the lesson. And I'm also in, um, implemented what I've been learning is that I've learned things my parents had no clue about because they weren't around then. The stuff that, they, that I learned, stuff I learned around, was around the stuff I've been learning for the last few years that wasn't only around for the last 10 years that my parents never had a clue about because it wasn't on their radar. So absolutely, most of our parents didn't have the tools that they could have used to become um, more developed or less toxic or whatever that was. So not blaming your parents but the thing is, if you're still carrying that baggage around from the past relationships, it's, this is a good time to stop doing that. Part of my work with my clients, and I was actually on an interview yesterday talking about this, um, which will be airing in a couple of weeks. I'll, give, I'll provide the links for that on my Facebook page once it comes out, so you'll know about that. Um, one thing it talks about is that we are carrying around the baggage from the past. When I work with my clients, I work with three specific areas, very simple ones, the past, the present, and the future. <laughs> I know, small stuff. But I talk about how the fact we do carry around our baggage, our wounds, our experiences from the past, well actually two things, our baggage from the past from our parents and our wounds from past relationships because they both tend to be blended together in a big steamer trunk full of stuff. So until you unpack that, it won't help you get what you want. So yes, it's good to have a vision and intention of where you want to go, which is your future. But if you don't deal with that stuff from the past, you'll never get there, just the way it is. Yes, he's some, he cannot go to the well if the well is dry. Something your late my aunt used to say, yeah, yeah perfect, yes. It is an impossible thing to do if you don't have, have the tools to get there. So healing your past, resolving it, making peace with it, forgiving, all these different tools to help you get free is where you can move into what you want to go for. So so how how do you leave the baggage at baggage claim when we hop a new flight and don't want to take it from baggage claim? <laughs> I like, the, I like the, um, the metaphors here. So to give you the brief Cliff Notes version is partly it's a form of reparenting. It's also part of... Um, basically updating your history. Because what's happening is you as an adult know better now, but your younger self doesn't yet. Your younger self did the, does the best he or she can or did at that time to survive, to thrive, to do what he could. So as an adult, you're still carrying that programming around, that subconscious stuff. So part of the baggage is your programming from the past, which can be resolved by basically reparenting yourself. It's right, basically, you're seeing through the adult eyes what happened when you were a kid, so you can see it's not true anymore. And secondly, you get to basically become the new parent to your inner child. That's one of the things. The second part is the wounds and trauma from the past relationships. That's resolving. Um, yeah. <laughs> Steve Chenin has his nickname for you, his metaphor, Amanda. I love it. <laughs> so the other part, the, the trauma stuff from the past. If you get bad breakups and you've got wounds from past relationships, sometimes we think the best way. And I, did, I talk about this thing. You watched this broadcast. I did it about three weeks ago, two weeks ago, about the ice on the, on the, on the sea which is um, a metaphor from um, Barbara, De Barbara De Angelis about basically if those wounds won't get healed on their own. You've got to be willing to break up the ice and heal it for yourself. So yes, reparenting, yes, mm, as you said. <laughs> but the wounds from the past are healable because it's not about them, it's about you. And this is the thing that people forget is that after a breakup, it's not up to your ex-partner to forgive you. It's up to you to forgive yourself. It's for you to come to peace with yourself, to come to terms with what happened and to make amends with yourself, not, nothing to do with anybody else. This is not 12 step where you have to write a letter and send it. It's about making peace with yourself. And by so doing, what you learn is that you are already a whole and healthy person. And what you learn also is that anything you hold against yourself or against your ex-partner can be forgiven. And when you do that, you release yourself from the trauma, from the pain, from the past. There's more to it than that. But that's the Cliff Notes version, as I mentioned. But forgiveness is a powerful tool that people forget. The F word, as I mentioned a few times, to free you from your past baggage and to free you from past traumas. So that's the result of the past. Future vision, future intention is vital if you want to create a great relationship. An online course I have, which I'll put the link in the comments, you can check it out. It's called Attract the Man You Want. I wonder what that does. <laughs> it helps you create your vision because having, you don't have a vision that is not just a 3D vision. I call it a 4D vision because you actually create a timeline into the future so you're going to attract what you really want to have. So forgiving the past, clear vision that is attracting you to what you want and attracting in what you want in your relationship. That's two. The third part, as I mentioned before, is relationship with yourself. That is 
the stuff in the present that you can work on. So, so you're reading Desmond Tutu's book about forgiveness right now. Yeah, he huh. he goes deep in that sense. But yes, I'm reading the book, but I know about it. And yes, making amends with yourself. I have a couple of worksheets I offer, but I also do work, work with my clients directly because self-forgiveness is such a potent tool we don't know about doing. And making amends to ourselves is how we do that. It's really coming to a place of grace. And that's one of my um, one of my one of my qualities. I can say this. I mentioned at the beginning that I've got background in spiritual psychology. I've also got a background as being a spiritual counselor for 20 years. When I was licensed in 2000 as a spiritual counselor, we all had spiritual qualities that we would we were randomly not randomly we were assigned that we didn't control. My quality that I got when I was licensed was a licensed as a practitioner was grace, which I was like, what the hell am I doing with this? Because you know, I'm a man for a start, so grace isn't my thing. But I've learned over the last 19 years that grace is a fundamental part of my work. It's a fundamental part of my life, and it's a fundamental tool that we can all use to allow ourselves to heal and to grow and become what we want. Grace is vital in this world because, frankly, um, you know, say like by the grace of God, I would say just grace. Period. Because grace is an expression of spirit in my word, world, world. So recognizing that you have that tool available yourself to be able to be grace-filled, to be graceful, and to let grace guide you is a powerful tool for doing this work as well. So, what are you saying here, Amanda? You, you admit it is one of the hardest things for you, for you to do because the shame-blame cycle shows up. Yes, make a mention of grace, believe it's something you need to learn about. I, I, yes, I appreciate what you're saying. Thank you for sharing that. And we, run, we all run our own um, hamster wheels of blame because it's the thing we're taught to do because society teaches us that way. But the reality is, none of us have to stay on them. And the thing is, we also, and again, this thing about our parental input, it, you, may have been, you may have run the, the shame-blame cycle running again and again, because maybe it's what your parents demoed for you. Maybe your parents demonstrated that to each other. Or maybe you've done to that by your parents even, who knows. But the truth, as you said, is that grace is something you can use, and getting off the tempster wheel is tap absolutely vital, and possible, and, and accessible, and you can do it. <laughs> I think I made that clear. So, to finish up the two pieces, so past forgiveness, releasing, making peace with, reparenting, coming forward, vision of your future that is an intention that is absolutely aligned to what your heart's desire is, that absolutely also gives you an experience level feeling what it'd be like to be there, so you become magnetic pulling it in. That's why it's called attract the man you want, my course, by the way. And the third piece is to come into a place of wholeness with yourself. I've talked about this many times before, and I'm just going to give you the short version here, which is basically when you love yourself fully, then you can give from your overflow and be available to a relationship. I mentioned the title about being able to be supported. Part of it is because you don't always feel you can trust to be whole yourself. And so feeling supported might feel like you're being weak. Not true. The best sports people, the best, what's the word? Sorry, the best athletes, best sports people, best athletes, the best performers, the best expressors are ones that get support from their coaches because it makes them more fulfilled, more, accept, more successful, and more aligned to who they are. And one of the ways to get there is to love yourself. To fill yourself up first, to open up your own space to love. If you're in a relationship or not, loving yourself is a great place to start because it removes the need for be codependent. It also removes the need to make your partner responsible for your love. Dangerous move. So loving yourself first is the way to go. So I will put some links in the comments because I did drop a few hints along the way. Um, I think there's going to be four of them. So I mentioned, so my self-love self -love guided meditation will be in the comments because that's, my, that's my, my favorite thing to offer. Yes, giving from your overflow and getting support isn't weak. Yes, thank you, Amanda. Well, you, you, you're, you're, the, uh, you're quoting me, so thank you for quoting me. <laughs> Absolutely the case. So um, links will be in the comments for my Attract the Man You Want program, a discovery session with me, my book, and the self-love guided meditation because those audio tracks will help you get where you want to go. So check them out, please. Find one that works for you. Grab more, grab one. Check them out, share them with your friends, blah, all that stuff. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, please share, excuse me, back up, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. They will help you. If you have any questions, comments, besides what has already happened in this broadcast, you can um, put them in the comments and respond when I sign off. Thank you for the interaction, Amanda. Thank you for Danielle for interacting. I appreciate that as a lot. This is my daily Facebook Live. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page. This is number 873, two, one of those. And I do this every day because it's my passion, my service, and my inspiration to help you get what you want. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, you certainly can find me on my personal page at 5 p.m. Pacific time, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. 
The replays go to my business page if you want to watch them there. There's most of them there, but all of them. I'll tell you about that in a moment. But if you go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby Author, you can like my page and watch the replays there and interact with them as well. However, all of my broadcasts are definitely for sure, definitely for sure, on my YouTube channel, because I have a backup there, where you can go watch them live. You can watch them in the recordings, although commenting there is a little different. You can comment. I'll respond, and you can message me there as well. My YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe, and there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. I think that made, it, made sense. Thank you for watching. Thanks for all the input and interaction. I appreciate that. And again, check out the links I'm putting in the comments after I sign off because one of them, all of them, some of them will help you. That's my gift, my service, and my inspiration to you. And I appreciate you being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow with another topic. We'll see what that's going to be about. And I thank you as always for watching, for interacting, and for taking care of yourself. Give from your overflow by filling yourself up first. It's worth it. It's fun. It's easy. And with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow.